Thank you, Cabinet Secretary. That concludes portfolio questions. Um, time is tight. We are going to move straight on to the next item of business, which is an urgent question. Uh, if a member wishes to ask a supplementary, I would ask them to press the request to speak buttons or indicate um, in the chat function. And I call uh, Russell Finlay. Thank you, President Officer. To ask the Scottish Government whether it will provide an update on the Scottish Prison Service's gender identity and gender reassignment policy review. Cabinet Secretary. I have asked uh, Theresa Medhurst, the Chief Executive of the Scottish Prison Service, the SPS, to update on the progress of the review. And she has confirmed that the SPS's gender identity policy review is being conducted in five stages. The policy initiation stage and evidence and engagement stages have now been completed. And the policy review is now moving through the analysis and recommendations and authorise and publish stages. SPS anticipate the updated policy being published in the coming months. And following implementation, the policy will be subject to ongoing monitoring and evaluations. Before calling Mr Finlay, can I just um, remind members or ask members to refrain from discussing the circumstances of any specific cases, particularly uh, any cases which are not yet concluded? I call uh, Russell Finlay. Yes, indeed. Uh, yesterday, a double rapist was sent into a women's prison, and for the legal reasons you've cited, I'll need to be careful about what I say. But this scenario is exactly what I tried to stop during the passage of Nicola Sturgeon's Gender Recognition Reform Bill. But I was voted down by the narrowest of margins. And even with the flawed bill in limbo, violent criminals are exploiting the system and putting vulnerable women at risk. So can the Cabinet Secretary tell me why his SNP government think that any rapist should be allowed inside a women's prison? Cabinet Secretary. Well, of course, the uh, Gender Recognition and Reform Scotland Bill, had it not been stopped by another government uh, completely wrongly, would not have changes, changed the SPS's approach to trans prisoners, which is not dependent on the possession of a GRC. Possession of a gender recognition certificate will continue to have a minimal impact on how SPS manage transgender people. Their process is one based on the assessment of risk. I think that's the important thing to do. It's the assessment of risk. It's the assessment of risk for the individual, the assessment of risk for other prisoners, the assessment of risk for the, for the prison staff as well. They have a tremendous track record in dealing with managing that risk. I would suggest they are far more expert in assessing that risk and dealing with it than any of us here in this chamber. I also point out this morning I visited SPS to discuss their management of risk in relation to serious and organised crime. The SPS is a fantastic organisation which deals with managing risks every day of the week. They have a great trans record in relation to trans prisoners, and I have faith in their ability to evolve their policy to continue that track record. Thank you. Can I encourage members both to listen to those asking the questions, but also those uh, answering the questions? Russell Finlay. So, uh, pretty much as expected, the Cabinet Secretary immediately tries to shift the blame on to someone else, in this case the UK Government and indeed the Scottish Prison Service. Uh, no one doubts their professionalism or uh, public interest in public service. What Keith Brown, I think, knows full well is that his government has the power to stop and to intervene, stop this and to intervene. And I would suggest he familiarise himself with SPS Rule 15, subsection 1. He can put this right at the stroke of a pen or with one phone call. So, today, will his government agree to direct the SPS to block this rapist and any others from being sent to a women's prison. It would have been more illuminating if Russell Finlay had actually listened to the last answer before going on to his preset next question. Uh, the simple fact is, I do, as I've said already, trust the SPS to deal with this. They do not, as is the case in England and Wales, have their process determined by the presence of a GRC. We don't do that in Scotland. That's not how it's done. So if somebody did have a GRC, it wouldn't guarantee them the right to be transferred to the place of their choice. Every single decision is carried out on the basis of risk. I trust the SPS to do that. Of course, I will be interested, as will the Parliament, in the policy review. We can have a discussion about that review when that comes back. But as things stand, I trust the SPS, and that is evidenced by their track record. When they have a case of a trans prisoner, Everybody, including health, possibly psychiatric, and other assessments are made. That is the right way to deal with these situations. And if you don't think it is, as I say, look at their track record in dealing with this. It is exemplary, and it's ensured the safety of prisoners for many years. Supplementary, Emma Roddick. 
Thank you, President Officer. Can I ask the Cabinet Secretary to confirm whether the GRR Bill changes the process of the Scottish Prison Service in respect of transgender prisoners? Cabinet Secretary. Well, it's an important point and it bears repetition uh, because it's not been taken on board by some of those who are asking the questions and who are shouting just now. Uh, the Gender Recognition Reform Scotland Bill does not change the SPS approach to trans prisoners, which is not dependent on possession of a GRC. Possession of a Gender Recognition Certificate will continue to have a minimal impact on how SPS manage transgender people in their care. Decisions on placement and management are not based solely on a GRC, but on a multiple uh, range of factors and thorough individualised assessments. So SPS will retain the ability to place an individual in an estate which does not necessarily correspond to the gender of their gender recognition certificate when they determine that to do so could put the individual or others at risk. It's a risk-based approach. The GRR bill is, of course, not currently in force, uh, so not relevant to any current cases. And Polly McNeill. Does the Cabinet Secretary at least accept that ordinary women and members of the public are outraged by the imprisonment of a rapist who, on two counts of rape, the most, one of the most serious charges in the Scottish criminal legal system, and the fact that Ms. we McNeil, have created Ms. McNeil, a segregated... Ms McNeill, I would caution you to refer back to the comments I made earlier on about references to particular cases. The fact that... The, Prisoners may be segregated in a women's jail in the first place speaks to the fact that the very nature of the women's prison estate is being changed to accommodate this. And I agree it's got nothing to do with the GRR bill because it's the risk assessment. I asked the Cabinet Secretary, would you at least consider that this risk assessment is obviously failing in some way because it's impacting on other women prisoners who have not been consulted about how they feel about this assessment. I call on the Cabinet Secretary to assure me that there will be a rights-based approach to this that will include the views of women and women prisoners and women who have served time in prisons, and that the crime of rape remains a crime that cannot be recorded as being committed by a woman, and that he will at least consider whether the new risk assessment is going to meet those requirements. Cabinet Secretary. Well, I should say that in relation to the uh, policy review and the outcome of that policy review, both Polly McNeill and Russell Finlay have the ability to question that in detail as members of the Criminal Justice Committee, as well as, of course, of being members of the Parliament. And just to confirm to Polly McNeill, it is a rights-based approach that's taken just now. Uh, the rights of everybody concerned are taken into account by the SPS. Well, again, the Criminal Justice Committee can have the SPS in and ask them on these issues. They can go through the process. It's a rights-based approach, and it is one which assesses the risks which are involved. Uh, so that is the approach they've taken. And uh, as well as that, during the course of the consultation that was undertaken in relation to the current review, Prisoners, including women prisoners, were consulted on this process, so they will have fed in to the outcome of this policy review. So I'm content with the process that's there just now. I think they've got a tremendous track record. Of course, I want to look at what they come back with in terms of the policy review, as will Paul McNeill and the committee. And at that point, we can ask further questions if we remain dissatisfied. I'm not. I trust the SPS to do what they're doing in this area, and I think their track record has shown they are more than capable of assessing the risks. Thank you, Cabinet Secretary. That concludes uh, this item of business. Um, I will have a brief pause before we move to the next item of business. Point of order, Emma Roddick.